Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman and it's Azure Friday. Did you know that ACA, Dynamic Sessions, is the coolest service that you've never heard about? We're going to learn about it today on Azure Friday. Hey friends, it's Azure Friday. I'm going to learn all about ACA today, but specifically ACA Dynamic Sessions. It's a service that I frankly haven't heard about, and I feel a little bad, Near. I should know about ACA Dynamic Sessions. Well, that's what we're here for, is to give you the cliff notes. Uh, so hey, folks, my name is Nir. I'm, I, work, I, get, I get the benefit of working on all these services. And uh, as you know, over the years since uh, uh, 2010, We've seen all of these different ways to, to run compute in the cloud and problems we're trying to solve. Um, we've seen all of these services that help us um, run faster, reduce the cost of, uh, of starting an application, and uh, reduce the management cost. I think, uh, Scott, you're a, a big fan of App Service. Maybe you can tell us. Yeah, what so this is a about. great slide here because it really explains that abstraction layer from you know 15 years ago, where you bring everything. You're effectively bringing a complete virtual computer, and then a couple of years later, Azure App Service for me was perfect. I could pick my runtime like .NET or Node or Python. I could have my application code, and I bring just that. Then containers comes along. It gives us a little bit nicer of an abstraction where I'm bringing a lot of the operating system, or at least an agreement on what the functions we're going to call are. And uh, it restarts up a little bit faster. Uh, and then you got things like AKS, where you have orchestration of multiple containers, but it might be there might be warm up times. It might not necessarily have a really fast uh, start unless you keep everything warm. I know what ACA is, Azure Container Apps, where I can fire up a container whenever I feel like it. Where does ACA Dynamic Sessions fit in? Because that's really high up on the app abstraction axis. That's correct. So I'm sure you've noticed there's this little thing called AI that showed up recently. I've heard um, of that. Yes, uh, it's, it's a big thing. Uh, but what started happening and what keeps happening is that we are now trusting AI to write code uh, on our behalf and execute it on our behalf. And mm. of course, we trust AI to be awesome, but uh, we really want to make sure that the code that AI um, ends up executing um, is sandbox in the right way, right? We don't want uh, Skynet to sort of emerge out of our uh, LLM discussion and be able to um, go to resource and use resources that are not uh, allowed. That's uh, a so great point, because if you think about Azure, you've got RBAC, role-based access mm -hmm. control, and then you've got containers, which are even, you know, even tighter and more uh, sandboxed than virtual machines. And it's all sitting on top of the Azure hypervisor. So what a perfect place in ACA to do sandbox execution. Correct. So what we're doing here is we're saying two things. One is we're saying we want to guarantee you, the user, when you ask an LLM to write and execute code, we want mm -hmm. to guarantee that that code is running in an isolated sandbox. Mm -hmm. And secondly, we want to guarantee that you'll get an awesome experience in terms of cold, cold start. Right? When I'm asking my LLM to go and calculate something for me, it has to run very fast. And for that, we made a bunch of uh, exciting changes as we basically are able to get these sandboxes to load in uh, less than 200 milliseconds. The fact that it starts up fast is interesting because I remember there was a time when ACA and containers would start up a little bit slower. So it sounds like their Azure Container Apps just keeps getting better in its cold start speed. Correct. So because we're able to manage all of these resources resources on your behalf, uh, we're able to uh, sort of optimize how many uh, warm uh, containers we, we run in the background, and that allows us to give them to you uh, very quickly. Okay. Cool. So um, let's learn a bit about the product and, and see a couple of demos. Um, I'll start off with this, sort of the simplest uh, case that we have. Uh, let me go to VS Code here. We are in Visual Studio Code now, and we have the simplest example of how you can leverage sessions. So uh, most of you or some of you are probably familiar with uh, things like Langchain and Semantic Kernel. Uh, those are frameworks that uh, emerged over time for people to be able to um, to create their own agents, right? So I don't know if you've been using those, uh, but uh, they're emerging as standards. 
So imagine I have an agent and I want the agent to uh, do something and it's not able to do it. It needs to be able to run code. Uh, Langchain in this example makes it as easy as uh, defining um, an environment that allows me to execute Python code. Those are sim uh, typically known as um, code interpreters. Mm -hmm. And then all I have to do is I tell my LLM, hey, you have a tool now, and this tool is this um, uh, REPL for, for Python. So I have this application running. Uh, obviously, I vibe code it. I just asked it to create an API for me. Mm -hmm. And what I can do now is I can go ahead and um, call uh, this API. So uh, it's just a fast, fast API. And okay. let's get a, a, a simple ask is, um, tell me what time it is in PST. And this is a funny and silly example, but you're basically turning prose into code in real time and then running it inside of a sandbox container in Azure Container Apps. Correct. So there's a lot of moving parts behind the scenes, but uh, we don't have to care about it because um, Azure and Container Apps are doing everything for us. Okay, so then Where you're saying that ACA Dynamic Sessions are presenting itself as a tool, and for the LLM, it's a simple tool call. Yes. And wow. as we can see now, the, the LLM started uh, to figure out what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. And it decided to invoke the, the Python code um, to figure out what time it is. And that's what it returned, right? So it went and ran the code and you saw how fast it did that. It most of the time took to it for it to write the actual code. And then it's out there and we got our answer um, that, you know, that is what the time is. Okay, yeah. Uh, so that's that shows you kind of how easy it is to do this. Um, if you use one of these frameworks, all you have to do is drop in uh, the endpoint for your dynamic session pool, and you're up and running. And to learn how to set up dynamic sessions, uh, you can look at our documentation. Uh, we, uh, it's not that complicated. And uh, let's look at some more examples be instead of that. All right, let's do uh, it. Yeah, so for our next trick, uh, what I've shown now is we were talking to uh, GPT-5 or, or some kind of hosted model, uh, but what if you want to run your own model, right? You want to run a small language model uh, because of privacy or cost uh, restrictions. Uh, mm -hmm. So in this example I'm going to show now, uh, we actually have an, uh, a feature that uh, folks may not have heard about, which is um, the ability to have uh, sidecars um, in uh, in App Service, uh, so App Service Linux recently GA the sidecar uh, capability, and what I've done is I took um, a sidecar container and installed Fi uh, Fi three point five, which is a Microsoft small uh, language model, and mm -hmm. I created an endpoint in the main container, and now I have a chat uh, GPT clone, if you will, that is running on my hardware. Uh, in my secure environment um, at the price of app service, which might be uh, cheaper in this case. And then I built this uh, a simple app that essentially um, takes any question that I ask and converts it into code using that LLM. And again, uses some uh, elastic, uh, um, uses uh, dynamic sessions to execute that code. Um, So this could be Python, it could be JavaScript, it could be whatever. Really, it could be an additional tool, anything that you can run in a container, and the container is dynamic. Do I get to choose the base image of the container? Yeah, so there's two modes. You have the, uh, if you will, um, uh, multi-tenant mode where we supply you with a, a sandbox that is either in Python or in uh, Node.js, or you can bring your own container, which I'll show in our next demo. Uh, so in, in this example, I just have some simple math question. Um, buying a house, I want to calculate my um, mortgage. And uh, essentially what we can see is we can see this uh, small language model is just writing the code for us. And it's going to go ahead and call a dynamic session to execute it. Uh, so notice how fast the execution was. And essentially what I've just shown you is two services in Azure uh, working hand in hand to solve this problem. We have app service hosting a model 
and dynamic session executing the code that this model has written. Mm. And this is great. And this is a great example. Being able to use something like Phi 3, these smaller models are not really notoriously good at math. Um, have them be good at what they're good at, uh, where in this case is you know calling a tool that will do the math for you. So it becomes an orchestrator of its own. It's a prose orchestrator that then calls into a tool which does sandbox code execution all safely in ACA, which we already know works great. So this is just a, a refinement of ACA for the AI age. Yeah. Uh, so our, our next uh, thing is uh, just to your question is, can I bring my own container? Uh, mm -hmm. So in the next example, um, I wanted to do something slightly more co uh, complicated. Um, so as you may know, I'm a big um, fan of uh, fantasy novels. So I decided to uh, try to figure out what are the themes in the in fantasy novels in in the last uh, year or so. Okay. Uh, to do that, um, I basically went and took uh, uh, the description of the top hundred novels from last year, and again I set up my own. Uh, compute and my own uh, uh, LLM. So in this case, I'm going to use um, the latest GPT, the GPT-5, um, GPT-520B, uh, it's like the open uh, open source mm -hmm. model. Oh, yeah, okay. And, and what I did is I used another feature of ACA, which is ACA, um, ACA GPUs. Uh, so as you can see here, I actually have an ACA uh, environment yeah, maybe you can hit Command Plus a couple of times just so I can see that a little better. Oh, so I see that it's spun up a GPU container. Thanks. Yeah. And you're actually at a bash. You're actually in the console of that container you just spun up and it started immediately. Yeah. And we can see that we have five copies to to kind of distribute my workload of, of uh, looking at those novels. So to your point, we're now inside the container and I can actually uh, see that I have Olama installed in there. And if I list, I can see that we're running the GPT OSS uh, 20B. Uh, so all of this is without having to provision anything. I just went to ACA and asked for some GPUs. Uh, so nice. now we have these five copies, and we also have um, a bunch of dynamic sessions that contain the custom code that I wrote to analyze the, um, the books. And finally, uh, because um, I wanted to visualize that, uh, I asked uh, um, I asked the uh, autopilot to help me code uh, a dashboard that will so, uh, show us the information, um, and we can see it it here. Uh, so what we're looking at is we're looking at the amount of sessions I had running. So as you can mm -hmm. see, each of those rep represent a dynamic session, each of the bars. It went and looked at all of the words that came back from the uh, the prompt, and surprisingly, it's all about love. And then we can see for each of these books, it went and actually did a bunch of AI quality work, where it um, took the uh, the book uh, description, extracted the title, the author, the relationships, and the emotions. Uh, so again, it it looks a, a bit silly, but what we're seeing here is we're seeing GPUs on container apps, dynamic session with custom code, uh, all working together to uh, to do some data analysis for me. Very cool. And then what do you pay for? You just pay for the seconds you're using it or the seconds the container is running? Yes, sir. So what I'm paying for is we are using a serverless GPUs um, in, uh, uh, in ACA. So I'm paying for the time that they're running. And uh, obviously I have to calculate for cold start. So in this case, just for the demo, I had them uh, at a minimum amount of uh, five containers. So I knew that they're going mm -hmm. to be up and running for me. Right. And then I'm paying for uh, the ACA sessions to run. Very cool. And this, does this exist now? Is this a preview or is this out? Oh, yeah. This is all out and actually in GA. Oh, wow. Fantastic. So where would I go to learn more if I want to set this up? Because I might have a use for this today. Oh, yeah. So uh, we're basically out in uh, uh, MS Learn on the Azure mm -hmm. site. And um, this uh, our site can show you everything about that. Um, I did want to mention uh, another feature we have in preview if we have time. Sure. Very briefly. We're just towards the end of the show. Uh, so as everyone knows, one of the big things we have uh, these days is MCP. 
uh, MCP is our ability to essentially uh, help agents leverage uh, each other. Mm -hmm. Another cool feature that's going to be out um, in the next few weeks is the ability to take these um, sandboxes that I showed you and make them MCP endpoints. So oh, wow. Let's say I want to process some, uh, uh, some data in Python, but I don't want to run it on my machine. Uh, maybe it's because of security. Maybe it's because I just want to run 100 instances in parallel. So as you can see, one of my remote, um, one of my session pools is defined as an MCP server. I went and connected to it, and it has three tools. One tool is creating an environment. The other one um, is, uh, runs the Python code. And the other cool thing I did is I, I'm still in the theme of books. So I have a list of uh, 100 random uh, uh, book titles. And I basically asked Copilot to um, do some analysis on the, the the data inside this file, but use my MCP tool to run them in the cloud. Uh, so as you can see, I went and asked, uh, um, I asked it to, uh, I asked it to uh, um, sort the books by title. Uh, so it went and decided to use the uh, remote environment, the MCP server, and it generated a table. Um, of the books sorted by title. So I the can irony of it. using the power of the of the super cloud to sort a list, but I think the larger point is that you've got effectively serverless, scalable, warm, unlimited compute that can do both CPU and GPU to run anything AI. And if you want to expose n number of tools via an MCP server. The work can happen wherever you want the work to happen. You showed it with a large language model, with a small language model. It could run on your local machine, call a tool in the cloud. They could both run in the cloud. You've got a, a Lego set of pieces that you can plug in however makes you happy. Correct. So that's why it's such a cool service because now I can go and um, run compute in a safe environment super quickly and weave these things together into a larger application. And it's out today. It exists. ACA Dynamic Sessions. I did not know that this exists, but now I did. And now my brain is reeling with all the stuff that I could build with this. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. Thank you. I am learning all about ACA Dynamic Sessions. That's serverless, fully isolated containers for any scenario, especially your AI applications. I'm learning about it all today on Azure Friday. Mm -hmm.